So I've just been pulled over by the side of the road by a police officer and I thought I was in trouble. What were you thinking when you saw Daddy just then? A bit confused. Confused? I'm testing my fitness to see where I'm at. Mm. <laughs> How about you, Rossi? What did you think, mate? What did you think? Rossi? Officer, and I thought I was in trouble, but he's saying hello because hey you, watch, you, you watch the vlog. Yeah, I certainly do. Watch, <laughs> just saying hello. <laughs> and uh, you got some tips for us maybe coming up on how to corner. Yeah, mate, I'd really love to get together for five minutes. Absolutely. Um, I ride these things at a very high level. Yeah, every, everything from a motorbike applies to a push bike. Yeah. And I can guarantee I'll transform your cornering in five minutes flat. Absolutely. Look forward to that. All right. Thanks for pulling me over. No <laughs> worries. <laughs> so I'm at the bottom of Gindia Drive, Wednesday afternoon. Bike is here, marathon's on. We're in full training mode. And it's a horrible day here in um, the Sunshine Coast. Come on. There it is, 24 degrees right now. Which is kind of an unfair training advantage really I've got here on the Sunshine Coast. I do miss Melbourne dearly, I know all my Melbourne supporters are gonna be like virtual. <laughs> just gonna roll up a little bit further. As soon as I started talking, of course, massive trucks just started driving past at the bottom of Gindia Drive here and there was some galah in a tree just started to hurl out some tunes. That's better. So those scenes that you just saw, we're going to get to those shortly. What I wanted to do first, and if you've just landed here, this is actually week two, or I should say episode two of a 10 week series that I'm doing, training for the Men's Masters and Nationals Road Race in South Australia, about nine weeks time now. I'm also doing the Criterium Race, which I should have mentioned in the first video, and I actually may be better suited to that, but we'll talk more about that later. Right here, right now, it's Wednesday. This week is week two of like a step ladder approach that I take to my training. So week one last week was eight hours and I purely did base training, sort of sitting in zone two. This week I'm starting to implement some high intensity stuff. So I'm doing 10 hours this week, four sessions, three at high intensity, one's gonna be more just zone two base building. And in this session today, this is a bit of circuit training. So I'm gonna be sitting in my bottom end zone four, so my threshold zone, for about, I'd say, I'm gonna do up Gindia here, which is about 3Ks, there's a 10K circuit, which I'm gonna go around. I did a video on this, which I'll link to below. And then I'm gonna go up the hill again after I come down. So I'd probably be 30 to 40 minutes of zone four training today. And that may not seem like a lot, but keep in mind, I have not been doing any high intensity stuff for a couple of months. So this is my first week and I'm building into it. So this session here in a few weeks time is gonna get a lot harder. So let's get into it. Hill climb into circuit complete. I'm gonna do one more hill climb, it's about three Ks, then I'll be done. And I'm gonna share a little tip with you. But before I finish the last hill climb, you know what's so good about this type of training, outside of the physiological impact, is that I had 101 thoughts before I started this session. Stresses and anxieties and all sorts of stuff. And they are now completely gone. It's like a window wiper. I've just wiped them completely clear. So I'm rolling down Gindia now. The high intensity stuff is complete. It's probably about 35 minutes all up. And the thing that I did today is I kept it in one gear the whole ride. So the 53 at the front, 14 on the rear. And essentially what that does is we're working different systems as we ride because we pedal at a higher cadence downhills, sort of a normal cadence, maybe 80, 90 on the flats. And then going uphill, we're about 60, 50, 60 cadence. So we're working the musculoskeletal system. We're working the cardio system, which essentially gives you different tools to utilize come race day. Now, before I get home, I just wanted to thank Body Talk. They sent me this kit recently. It's a beautiful kit. Thank you very much for sending it through. Excellent one. <laughs> so I've, ju I've just been rolling around, well I've just finished doing some hill repeats and I've bumped into some people from Specialized. <laughs> Tills, what are you doing here? Secret mission, we're up here, just put my clothes back on. Uh, we're up here, um, actually test riding the all new Creo SL. Right. Uh, we've got a couple what of do they look like? Is that this bike here? So I'll show you. Uh, that's, you got yours? Uh, yeah, this is actually the Evo spec. 
So the difference between this and the Here's road your spec. Oh, thank you. This is the difference between the this and the road spec is uh, uh, essentially just the tyres. Uh, you've got the wider handlebars um, width and just and uh, and a dropper post as well. So electronic e-bikes are. Uh, Road bikes, e-road bikes. This is an e-road bike. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So um, this is the Evo model. We then have a more road-specific uh, model, but yeah, essentially this one's covered in mud because we took it through some single track. Yeah, right. As well. But, so where'd you go today? Uh, we've just done 80k yep. with um, 300 meters of climbing. Yeah. Uh, in about two hours 40. Right. Yeah. So how fast are we going these things? So we'll we're hitting on the flat just before opening yep. up a little bit, going 44k an hour. Yeah. Right. So it acts like just a normal high performance specialized road bike. Right. Um, but then when you hit the hills and and you um, it comes back into that 25k limit, then it, it, the motor kicks in and you just spin calmly, I guess, uh, and pedal up the hill with essentially the hand of God yeah, uh, right. pushing you up the hills. Look, I'm blown away by it, and obviously, look, I work for the company, but it's not every day you'd get me on an e-road bike and I'd choose this over my tarmac. So, really? Yeah. Wow, that's a big call. Yeah, it descends better than it, so. Really? Yeah, wow. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed, so. Wow. Cool. Yeah, All don't right. take my tarmac away, though. <laughs> So I'm here with Nick as well. Oh. Nick actually appeared in one of the videos recently talking about the differences between the what are we talking about? The difference between the entry level tarmac and the top level tarmac. What do you reckon of these machines? What do I reckon of these yeah. machines? I yeah. don't ride my tarmac anymore. <laughs> really? that's, that's what I reckon about well, these machines. Wow, well, tools are saying the same thing. Why do you what's so good about them? Uh, there, there isn't much wrong with them to be honest. You still get a workout. You can go pretty much anywhere, literally explore whatever hills, whatever scenery, whatever mountaintops. Yeah. Um, and no intimidation, no no panic, no worries about getting home or making it over the top of that crest, all that kind of stuff. And you have beers when yeah, you get and, back. Well, and, <laughs> and, I, and I can talk and drink a beer as soon as you get back. From the Why has this got no specialised on it? This one here. Why has it got no specialised? Uh, because it's been a field test uh, machine for the last six months, so right. I've had this had to be sort of undercover and undercover. Uh, we had a few <clears throat> a few of them around the world doing a lot of field testing, kind of final rider approval stuff so yeah. just checking that all the, the bits work in the right places and, and sending feedback back to our Switzerland office which is where all the, the technology is produced. So if someone rides up next to you like before this is actually released yeah, and yeah. said what are you riding can you tell them? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I just, I just, you just ride right off at 50 k's an hour. Yeah. So that was certainly not part of today's training plan that is to stop in a random house and have a furphy which is a beer with a whole bunch of specialized people and their dealers. But you gotta live your life. Your part is your best. Dada. You smell it. Yummy uh, now. Stuck in chippy on you. Stuck in chippy. Stuck in chippy. Yeah, no, no, don't, don't get on this side, please. Okay. Uh, you know, you got your foot in my smoothie. <laughs> you put a foot in my smoothie. <laughs> So I realized something after the last video we did, the first as part of this 10 week series last week is the car is actually a really great environment for me to have a conversation with you in a quiet environment. My mother-in-law is still with us, um, but irrespective, my wife's always making noise. The kids have always left an explosion of mess in the house and it's not a great house. This is a first world YouTube problem. The house is not a great house from a lighting perspective. So the car is pretty good. There's a bit of brightness coming in here, but I think we can deal with that. And it's the week here in the Sunshine Coast. It's been an unbelievable midwinter week. It feels like summer. So I'm actually perched now at the front of a bike shop. I've just told my patrons about this. I'm going to be reviewing a really, really good bike. I'm really looking forward to this one. So you'll hear more about that in coming videos. What I wanted to do quickly is summarize what you saw at the start of the video. It's been another really busy week this is week two as you saw it was ruby's sixth birthday party i was doing some study there because on the weekend that's just been i've just completed my level one track and road cycling coaching course my wife in between all this has gone to yapoon which is about a five hour drive north and she's completed her first triathlon let's hear what alice had to say about that this is how i get you isn't it before you go inside <laughs> what are you doing and you did your first triathlon it was good well how far did you go uh, 2k swim, yeah. 80k bike, yeah. 20k run. And it's your first triathlon ever. First triathlon ever. Not a great run. Great run. Over, and where did you finish over. in your age group? Six. Six? Out of hundreds, yeah? Thousands. Thousands. <laughs>
and I got pulled over by, his name's Peter or, or Pete, which was pretty funny. But as it turns out, he, Pete, just follows the channel and we're gonna go for a ride together and he's gonna teach us some cornering skills, some skills that he's learnt riding on that motorbike of his and also being a road cyclist. So Pete, I look forward to that. So we're gonna start getting into some meaty stuff as part of this series starting next week. I'm conscious I've had a whole bunch of people send me some ideas about, like over this 10 week period, I'd like to understand your nutrition plan. I'd like to understand how you're gonna phase in your training schedule. Some of you live in a hilly area, so you want to understand how do you build base fitness if you live in a hilly area. There's a whole bunch of things that we're going to get through over the next, say, eight to nine weeks. But for now, we're just setting the foundation. And as you saw at the start of this video, in between everything else, I've done an FTP test and I weighed myself last week. So I've got some work to do. Interestingly, my FTP results, the numbers were very similar to a test that I did two and a half months ago where I did the husband versus wife FTP test. I'll link to that video below if you haven't seen it. But interestingly, I, was a, I felt like I was a lot fitter back then, about two and a half months ago. But ultimately, I wanna get my FTP. I think the goal is to get the FTP over the next 10 weeks. I like to get it up to 370-ish around there. I think that's a good goal to have and get the weight down another five kilos. So I think FTP around 370, weight around 76 kilos. I think that will put me in a in a strong position to perform well in the road race in particular because there's a number of hill climbs in that and we're gonna to get to the details on what that race looks like and how I'm gonna implement that into my training plan in later videos. And also the Criterium race. So more details to follow and I'll catch you in the next video.